Hello, everyone. All good? Okay. So imagine a scene like this. He sits there, slumped by the goalpost, and he just looks devastated. And he looks straight ahead, and his mouth is a really thin line. And he's just sitting there. And they asked him afterwards, they're like, what did you feel like? And he said, it was the worst mistake I've ever made, worse than any other mistakes. And out of all the mistakes, it was a mistake I made in the final, and there's nothing I can do to make it undone. Do any of you know who I'm talking about? Any guesses? Go on, James. No. Well, what if I showed you this picture? I hope that you'll all be transported back to that final in 2002 where Oliver Kahn just basically encapsulated the devastation of our entire nation when we realised, well, we had not become the next world champion. In fact, we had just lost. Um, and yeah, so there's that story there. A picture says more than a thousand words, I think we can all agree. And football itself, as you probably appreciate, is full of emotion. There is joy, there's frustration, there is trust and pride, and sometimes there's also a little bit of fear. It's not just emotion though. There is also plenty of data. And with all that data, just like with emotion, a picture, a visualization, a chart, a dashboard tells the story so much better than, as I like to call them, wallpapers of numbers. My name is Eva Murray. I'm Exosol's head of BI and Tableau evangelist, and I look after sports analytics for Exosol. And as many of you probably know, I'm really keen on data visualization. That's my thing. And what I love doing and helping other people to do is to build more effective visualizations, to build better data stories, so that we can have better bases for decision making. So let's look at football. What kind of data is being analyzed? There is a lot of data there. Um, let's just set the scene to make sure everyone in this uh, fairly open room is on the same page. So we have data coming from video that's automatically coded. And then we have manual data that's being entered. And when we look at different types of data, just roughly speaking, we have the events data. So everything that happens with the ball, we have um, you know, the, the different shots on goals, we have duels, we have passes, kickoffs, etc. Then we also have tracking data. So typically clubs uh, obtain that in their training. And you might have seen uh, players, and I couldn't get a right picture of it, at least not one we could purchase legally and show, where players wear these tracking vests and everything they do is tracked, uh, their positioning, the angles and everything. And then there's stuff beyond the pitch. So ticket sales, food and beverages, merchandise, there's smart stadiums tracking all sorts of things. And when you look at what people are doing in the US, they're doing, sorry, crazy shit with data. Um, and then, of course, we have social, all the engagement with the fans that happens on social media, and that can be woven into this overall story. So what's the data used for? Well, we're gathering a lot of it, and then some is gathered by clubs, and other data is gathered by data providers, such as, as one example is, Opta. And um, then what happens with that data? Well, there is some stuff that the clubs do with it, and one area that I thought would be really interesting to look at is, what could they actually do where time matters? You know, there's, well, I don't want to say they have plenty of time before and after matches because they have plenty of things to do, but what about during a match? What about some live analysis? Well, uh, during a game, there is a limited amount of time, let's say 45 minutes of the first half, to do some analysis and then to provide some reporting to a coach during half time. Let's say they've got about 10 minutes to get anything communicated to the players. So if we want to give anything of value to the coaching staff during those 45 minutes at the beginning, it needs to be fast and it needs to be kind of frequent live data inputs. So let me show you a little demo. A little prelude, while I can't show you, of course, what exactly the clubs are doing, um, I have seen some reports, so there is this stuff going on. I will show you a dashboard that I built with data that is available in these live feeds, and then I'll show you afterwards how that actually happens from a technology perspective. Okay, so uh, I'm going to look at defensive actions on the pitch. I'm going to build three different charts, put them together in a dashboard, and then we'll have some interactivity. 
And uh, we're going to start with just building uh, uh, the pitch itself. So I like to ask myself questions when I build a data visualization. Where are things happening? When are things happening, etc. So let's look at where these defensive actions are happening. And to keep this easy for you to consume, you're all seeing Tableau, right? Okay, good. Thank you for telling me now. Um, okay, let me let me just close PowerPoint. Are you seeing Tableau now? Well, this isn't isn't really helpful. Um, one second. Now. So we have a logo. HDMI. I want this screen to show. It's number three. Yeah, it's when I take the USB C. It's yes. Okay. Well. Now you can see Tableau. Um, I'm going to build some, some charts and a dashboard. Um, so looking at defensive actions, I filtered, I, I've created a set to just uh, include certain types of actions because uh, I want this to be easy to kind of follow along on the screen. And um, let's build our pitch first. So we have the X and Y coordinates for the different uh, events. And we're going to filter it down just to a single team for now. And um, they obviously don't have the real names in them. And now the different event types I've just color coded. So I've just got three in here, aerial duels, ground duels, and interceptions. OK. <laughs> um, good. OK. So we also need a couple of extra bits of information, uh, our match minute as well. And yeah, that should be it. Oh, hang on. They don't detail. Um, OK, so I'm just going to tidy up the tooltip a little bit. Um, I like having a little bit of information in there, but not too much. And you can see I did a bit of pre-formatting because just to save us some time. OK. Here we go. So we've got some tooltips. Excellent. So we have a bit of an answer to the question of where things happen. Now, it's very busy, but once we have the interactions going on on the dashboard, that will all become more obvious. So now I want to understand when are these actions happening. And the, the first idea for this chart came from the question, do we have less defensive actions in the second half? Are people getting tired? But also, and that would be beyond the space of this demo, Depending on the score, what's the, how are the dynamics changing? Is there more defensive action going on or less? So uh, first up, again, we'll just filter down to our defensive actions. And then we have our match period ID, which is just first half, second half. So I'm just going to divide the chart up that way. And we want our match minute in there again. And then the number of actions that were happening. And as you can see, here's a little bit of an outlier. And we'll just exclude that. So I'm going to use a running total so I can see you know, how did they accumulate over time and how do they compare. And of course, we don't have 100 minutes in each half, so we'll split that up. And, OK. And uh, what was I doing? Um, event type, again, on color. Something, oh, helps if I recalculate it properly. OK, and now we need our team and our match day in there as well. So very busy. Again, it gets a little bit easier in a second. Now, lastly, I just want to give the, um, the user the option to actually select what day uh, and what team. So what team and what match day do they want to look at just as a way of filtering. And for that, we're going to create, oh, hang on. Uh, a quick calendar view, I like to call it. So we'll do that. And we'll just uh, add that here. And have I missed anything? No, I'll oh, just our defensive actions again, of course. Okay, cool. So let's put it together. 
and oh, ta da magic. Um, it filled up automatically nicely for me. Um, but let's put in some, uh, the actions are already applied. So, no, they weren't, they were initially. Uh, let's put an action in there. So when did the teams play? So this is the calendar. Uh, I want that to filter all the other, uh, the other charts and then the highlight action. I want to, yes, also that is all correct. So let's refresh. So now when I hover over my, uh, my little running totals, I can see where on the field that happened. And I can also see that we seem to have more in the first half compared to the second half. Now this is obviously some very, very basic analysis. The idea being just that you could build any sort of dashboard and as the data comes in over the course of the game, the dashboard can fill up. So whatever is meaningful for you and for your circumstances, that can be filled up over time. So let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint presentation, which I just need to quickly open. Okay. Can you see that? Okay, great, excellent, we're back on track. So uh, let's look at what the architecture behind this uh, activity is. And it's actually very simple. Um, and here again, the, the example is the Opta data feed. Now with others that would be slightly different, but the concept is the same. So Opta provide different data streams. And the one we just saw was F, it's called F24. It's all the events data and it's very commonly used. Um, the data is updated around every 30 seconds or so. Um, and what we do is with Exasol, we put a Python user-defined function. So that's a Python script, and what it does, it, it pulls the data at the same time as applying business logic. Because in the original data source, we have codes like, I don't know, maybe 104 is a shot on goal. So what we want to do is in the same step to apply that logic so that in the final data set, we just have plain English descriptions and we don't have to you know, work with these codes. So um, that all happens in one step. And then we have a live connection to Tableau, which you saw before, where we can do our visual analytics on the go or, or ad hoc, but we can also pre-build a dashboard that fills up. And then essentially what happens, in desktop you hit F5 or you schedule automatic refreshes on the server, and every time you do that, you get the latest data as much as is available from Opta or another source at that moment. So there's a bit of dependency there, of course. Um, we can say real time, but it's only as real as the data from the original source coming in. And the user-defined function, the beauty of that is that it's a very slick process where you don't have to first download the XML and then transform it and upload it into the database. It all happens in one swift go. And these user-defined functions work anywhere where you have an API. So you could apply them anywhere and the script can be um, also applied to, of course, all the other streams, but also to other data sources and it just needs to be tweaked slightly. Now, what if we want to do something a bit you know, more? And we all know that football is not just about the ball, but also about controlling space. So a lot of clubs, as we uh, heard earlier, they use tracking data and they have access to a lot of data. There's, uh, with this tracking data per player, you get at least 10, se um, 10 data points per second that you have of data of all the different positions and all this different information. So they can see what is going on and um, how are attackers creating space for themselves, but also how are defenders trying to uh, shape that space. And I want to show you another demo for that purpose. So let's uh, jump over to Tableau again. We're in Tableau, good, thank you for the nods. And this time I want to build a Voronoi chart. Who, who's familiar with Voronoi charts? A, a few people, yeah, excellent. Um, so. This I actually learned from a colleague a week ago. He's a, he's a super football nerd and we decided, okay, let's do this at the Tableau conference. And this is all about controlling space. So I'm gonna start again, um, I'm gonna add a frame ID. So frame ID is the frame of the, of the tracking. And there's, um, I think in this, we have nine frames per second just so that we have it fast enough. And um, that's gonna go on pages. Oh, sorry, that was uh, the wrong way around. We're going to start with our frame coordinates and we should get a nice little pitch, yes. And we will put our team ID on color so that you can see the two different teams and the black circle is the ball. And now we can build our Voronoi chart properly. 
and we need a dual axis. And let's hide all these headers. Cleaning up is always uh, something I like to do while I build that. Okay, so it looks a bit messy, but bear with me for now. So I'll put the team ID on shape as well so that the ball is filled in and the teams are hollow. And now we need to change our Voronoi to a polygon. And one thing, oops, sorry. Uh, we also need that on detail. And it will, oh, Tableau keeps jumping to the top. There we go. So now we have our Voronoi chart about controlling space. And I'm just going to go into full screen mode and we're going to just let that run a little bit so you can see what actually happens. So you see the ball being passed, that's the dark circle, and the, the, the shapes shift as we go. And at some point you'll see the ball going out and then it comes in and then the dynamics change actually quite a bit. So I'll just let that run for the next few seconds. So the ball is about to go out. And then it's going to be controlled by the other team shortly. And for those curious, so you saw that the chart, building the chart is actually not that difficult. You know, it's just a few clicks. Uh, but what we did in the background was to set up the data in the data source in the right shape so that we have all those, uh, so we have the data points of the players and the ball at all times for all these frames. But what we also needed to actually build this chart was to have the data points that shape the polygons um, and making them end, because Voronoi charts go into all eternity. So we need to make them end at the edge of the of the pitch. So that was where the work was then to actually build the, the data structure in the background. But even that is very simple because there's a lot of scripts already in existence. So again, we use the Python script and we will make that available on GitHub as well. Okay, so a couple of demos there. Uh, let's jump back to our slides and we're good, excellent. So. Aside from making things faster, uh, how do we actually empower football analytics using XSL with Tableau in combination? So what we claim and what we pride ourselves in is that we don't put limits on what our customers want to do with their data and how much data they want to use and where they want to use it and how. And when it comes to football, what that means is that you have space, literally, for all of your leagues and all of your seasons and all of your matches, everything you want to bring in. It means more data, yes, but the database can handle that um, very easily. And what we want to empower our customers to do is to do more of the analytics, to refine all of their analytical models because they can fine tune them with more data, uh, to actually do the real time analytics and to even create some mental uh, and resource and time space to have enough availability to tackle new projects. Uh, that has happened with one of our customers. Um, they're a Champions League club and they said, well, we finally actually have the opportunity because it's now physically and technologically, te technologically possible to do this project we've always wanted to do and to do this analysis. So who benefits from Exosol? I would say it's always the people who have the pain and the common pain points that we've seen with clubs but also in general business is we have disparate data sources, we have not a single view of a player because we have information from different sources but we can't really combine it um, we have performance challenges things running very slowly or not running at all um, and then resulting out of that we have missed opportunities there are things we just haven't been able to do because of the first three and the solution I'm afraid to say is data modeling so uh, yes you don't have to necessarily have that in-house you can buy that skill in but you're not going to get around setting up the data the right way to then do all of the stuff that comes on top, all of the analysis, the data science, etc. cetera. Um, and that is something where we see a huge amount of opportunity because you have all the different sources, you can bring them together uh, to make them all sing and work well together. So how does that actually change the game? What is in it for you? First up, of course, there's fast time to value. It's about delivering the results when they're needed 
And yes, at half time, it's just going to be a couple of pieces of information. There is only so much people can process. Um, but it's not. It's about no waiting anymore. It's about just doing the analysis. And if you work with Tableau the way I do, you probably have this moment where you get into the flow and you just don't want to stop. And if then you have to wait for five minutes for something to load, it's a very frustrating and disrupting. And you can tackle those new projects that you might have had on the back burner because it was just too hard. And in the end, we also want to support the recruitment process to help clubs build the ultimate teams and what I want to mention there, and uh, we're more than happy to chat to you about it at length, is functionality that we have around data science. And one that uh, stands out to me is Skyline. It's something we've developed, and it's about preferring and preferences. So if you imagine, and I have to move away from football for one second, but if you imagine stocks, you've invested in stocks, or you want to invest in stocks, ideally, very high return, very low volatility. That's what we all want. So you might have a selection of 5,000 different options. You plot them all on a scatter plot. And then you want to know, well, which give me the highest return and the lowest volatility. And with the Skyline functionality, you can literally write two lines of code. It's a very simple SQL that tells the, uh, the database, well, give me all the stocks that prefer high return and low volatility. And it will plot uh, those stock options for you and show you for any of these intersections, there is no better option than the one I have just highlighted. And when we transfer that back to looking at player recruitment, of course, when you have defined characteristics, and I've seen plenty of spider charts, and I find them quite cool and exciting, but I imagine the struggles of trying to match a different spider diagram for the different players to the requirements that the club actually has. So if you can let the engine do the calculations and to say, well, out of this entire pool of players, here are the ones that actually best fit what you would like to have, and then I see a huge opportunities in there. So where do we go from here? And I've got now three slides you're more than welcome to take pictures of, but we also have them nicely printed on pretty firm, quite nice paper um, that, that we have at our booth. So please feel free to come over. We're literally just on the other side of the hall in that corner, um, and we'll happily hand them out to you. So. I would say start with some questions. What is it that you actually want to do? And what would you do if there were no limits on data performance, uh, sorry, data volumes and performance on how much you can do, how much time you can spend with it? Um, and what, uh, yeah, what are some of those questions that you want answers to? We, uh, yeah, we can help you get there and we're really curious um, to see what your analytics nirvana would look like. And we don't really care where your data lives, whether it's in the cloud, it's on-premise, it's somewhere in between or both. Um, so happy to chat to you about that. Now, moving further, I just wanted to add a few ideas here. So we've spoken about player performance and how clubs want to you know, up their game, use more data to fine-tune what they do with data. And of course, data visualization is quite key to that communication especially between the data people and the sports people, because I understand there can sometimes be a bit of a, a disconnect or a challenge. So it's about making that very visual and, um, and easy to understand what's actually going on. And then there's great opportunities for clubs to connect with the wider community that's out there. And there's actually quite a lot of people in this you know, whole conference who are really into it, who are maybe fanalists, as they like to call themselves, but also bringing in people from academia. And what we support um, some organizations with is, for example, hackathons. So we can host an environment where the data is secured, but they can add people to the environment with certain limitations that they provide and say, well, use this for the hackathon. We give you a challenge, solve some of our problems. And not only do they hopefully get some answers, but maybe they can also find some really interesting talent that they can recruit. And then when we look at going beyond the pitch, um, data and analytics obviously offers great opportunity to get more out of that side as well. So looking at revenue from ticket sales, et cetera, and engaging with fans, making them more part of the process and of the overall football experience. And then lastly, maximizing your technology. So what we recommend is to not burden yourself with some of the, the legacy tech and not necessarily ripping everything out and replacing it with something new, but just seeing what's important, what do we actually want to do and what do we need, what gaps do we need to fill, what do we need to plug in um, so that we can use the best in class tools to actually go to where we want to go. And that helps them get more, more value from their data ecosystem 
and to make things possible that weren't possible before. So, whether you're a sports scientist, a data analyst, whether you work for a club or a consulting firm, or you're completely out of the realm of football, based on what you already know and what you heard in the last 26 minutes, I want to ask you whether you will change the game. Thank you.